In 1981, having entertained the nation for four decades, Harry was awarded a knighthood. I was practicing yesterday and I split my trousers. So I thought, uh, <laughs> if it happened today, so I had all my trousers reinforced. But fortunately, it was a nice high stool and no bother. You didn't, uh, you didn't need to block and tackle that? You no, were, uh, thank about heavens, it. no. <laughs> I have to get up in time. Can you give us a, uh, uh, a sure stay at the old night yeah. battery? Yes, there we are, sir. Harry and his friends had always joked about his weight. I'm sorry, sir, you cannot put that huge, bloated, Welsh body down. <laughs> Watch it, Roger. I have been watching it, sir, and it gives me no pleasure. But by the 1980s, it was no longer a laughing matter. Now weighing in around the 20 stone mark, Harry was experiencing problems with his health. Even after a near-fatal bout of peritonitis, he didn't heed doctor's advice to change his behaviour. A couple of years later, the consequences caught up with him. In 1982, Harry was performing at Sydney Opera House when he almost passed out on stage. The doctor that examined him the next day told him that if he didn't change his lifestyle, Harry would be dead within two years. So I wouldn't have died then, and I haven't had a drink since that day. Do you miss it? I'm thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't miss it. I, 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 I'm telling you, Phil, I missed it to begin with. And do you miss the drink? No, I don't. No, <laughs> <laughs> no I, don't, I don't miss it. No. We do have, thanks to your permission, yes. uh, your current passport photograph. Oh, have you seen it? We'd like, we'd like to have a look at this. Harry Seacombe's current passport photograph. <laughs> All I want to know is, how did you get back into the country? It, honestly, they took a second look. <laughs> I had to sing a chorus of viral of the world to get in. <laughs> then they kept me out. <laughs> At the age of 62, when others might have been winding down their careers, Harry was about to embark on a new one. In 1983, he was invited to present a new Sunday night show featuring hymns and real-life stories from believers all over Britain. Though Harry claimed he wasn't a heavily religious man, his natural warmth made him the perfect presenter for Highway. When I was a teenager, I was lucky enough to sing with Harry in Rome for a special edition of Highway. It would have been very easy for him to treat me like a little kid, but he actually took me under his wing. I have very fond memories of tasting my first glass of red wine sat next to Harry Seacombe at the piano. As he used to say, it's nice to be big, but you don't have to be big to be nice. Highway ran for ten years, and when it ended, Harry was quickly headhunted by the producers of Songs of Praise. But in 1999, Harry suffered a double blow. Just weeks after he'd been diagnosed with prostate cancer, he had a serious stroke. In order to improve public awareness of the challenges faced by stroke sufferers, Harry and Myra allowed documentary makers to follow them through the long, slow process of recovery. Myra has been at Harry's side throughout, giving her encouragement and support as she's done through the 52 years of their marriage. They are wonderful, these two. They are really wonderful. Every flicker of a finger, one thing, it all excites us, you know. But that is wonderful. That takes, takes some determination, because he's got to sort of set himself up to do it. Yeah. Sad on times. Good. Well done. Get into your rhythm. Lovely. That's it. That's it. There we are. <laughs> hey, well done. Oh, that's the first time. <laughs> yeah, it is, yeah. Independent free, feeling yeah. about it. It's worth the hard work, isn't it? Oh, it yeah. 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 But you work really hard. <laughs> it's tissue time <laughs> in the gym. Oh dear, Myra, you and I together. <laughs> By the time Harry appeared as a guest on Songs of Praise in the year 2000, he was once again back on form. I've got uh, uh, prostate cancer, diabetes, and a stroke. And the one thing to do um, to forget about prostate cancer is to have a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
It <laughs> concentrates the mind, Joan. <laughs> I'm sure it does. <laughs> But, I mean, there are things that are never going to be quite the same again. No, well, I think you, once you get a stroke, you say, well, that's it. Uh, you know, for now, that's the end of the uh, Harry Siegel that was, and now there's a new life opening up. So it's Have you great. find yourself grieving in some ways for what you've lost? Not really. I think if you wallow in self-pity, then you're, you're, there's, it's, you don't get anywhere. You've got to accept what's happened to you and, and get on with life. Harry's positive attitude, his sense of humour, and the love of family and friends all helped pull him through. <laughs> what this thing is a horse called Doris? Well, one, one ran away. Yeah. God, the, the great taste, Harry. We oh, actually we saw we saw the last days of of yeah, the best variety. Yeah, 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 we did. Yeah. He must be one of my oldest friends. Yeah. I'm 81. Yeah. And I don't seem to be anywhere near death than if I was 100. And uh, I actually was wondering what my death that scene would be like. I'd like to be there and all my children around me. I would like that. Well, I think, you know, when you've gone on, when you've passed on, whatever, there's something in, in a poem that, uh, and think this heart, all evil shed away, a pulse in the eternal mind, no less give somewhere back those thoughts by England given. Now that thing, a pulse in the eternal mind, to me represents What's happened to us after we die? Oh, I'll have to wait for that then. <laughs> <laughs>Famed actor Kenneth Griffith is next week's Welsh Great at the same time, 10.35, here on BBC One Wales. Next tonight, A Time to Kill.